Now, China's uh, new ambassador to the U.S. has taken up his post in Washington, D.C., and Qing Gang wasted no time stepping into his new role as setting the tone for his tenure in his address to the media. I firmly believe that the door of China-U.S. relations, which is already open, cannot and should not be closed. This is the trend of the world the call of the times, and the will of the people. And Qing Gong also said the two countries are trying to find a way forward despite their differences in many areas such as culture and social system. He said the two sides are facing many difficulties and challenges, but also great opportunities and potential. And the new ambassador said he will follow through on the spirit of the phone call between President Xi and President Biden on the Chinese New Year Eve and uh, seek to improve communication. Qin is the 11th Chinese ambassador to the U.S. after serving as vice foreign minister for three years. And now here is a brief introduction to Qin Gang's career before becoming ambassador to the U.S. Born in Tianjin in 1966, Qin Gang began his career at Beijing Service Bureau for Diplomatic Missions in 1988. He later moved into the Chinese Foreign Ministry, where he specialized in European affairs between 1992 and 2002. He was Foreign Ministry spokesperson for two terms between 2005 and 2014. Qin accompanied President Xi Jinping on numerous overseas trips while he worked at the Protocol Department of the Foreign Ministry. He became China's vice foreign minister in 2018, mainly in charge of protocol and news. He has always been very firm in defending China's interests and has regularly criticized countries that use baseless claims against China. And Qin Gang's predecessor, Ambassador Chui Tingkai, left his post after eight years and has returned to China. Here's more on his work in Washington. Chui Tingkai is China's longest serving ambassador to the United States a role he began in April 2013. His term spans three U.S. presidents, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden. He worked in China's foreign ministry for many years and served as China's ambassador to Japan before being appointed as Beijing's top envoy to the U.S. During the second half of his term, relations between the two countries deteriorated on issues such as trade, human rights, and foreign policy. China's strategic goal is to develop itself rather than to challenge anyone else. Whilst tensions between the pair often got heated and fears of confrontation persisted, Tsui's position already remained consistent that cooperation and dialogue was the only way forward. To those in Washington and beyond, Tsui was a well-respected figure. Former U.S. ambassador to China, Winston Lord said he was strong in defending Chinese interests, but always did so with the sense of trying to encourage some sort of dialogue. We certainly have the legitimate right. Cui was a frequent guest on major U.S. TV networks. On many occasions, he debated with news anchors on issues ranging from Xinjiang and Taiwan to the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2015, on CNN's Amanpour, he strongly defended China's territorial claims in the South China Sea when China's historical evidence was contested. In his farewell message, Tsui said China-U.S. relations were at a critical crossroads, and he asked Chinese Americans to do all they could to be a positive contributor to stable and healthy China-U.S. relations. For more on the new U.S. ambassador and his speech, uh, let's talk to current affairs commentator Aina Tangan. Aina, hello there. Welcome to Global Watch. Well, in his speech, Qin Gang said um, that uh, Dr. Kissinger's uh, secret trip to China uh, opened the door to China. And uh, there is uh, no need to have any secret trips for, uh, between the two countries, of course, now. But he said the door between the two countries should not and could not be closed. How should we read into that sentence? Uh, is there an, any danger of closing that door? Well, you know, from the Chinese side, I mean, what is daily attacks from the uh, Biden administration following the almost daily attacks from the Trump administration. So there is this concern about exactly where the U.S. wants to take this relationship. I, I think what was really surprising here is just um, how diplomatic a tone 
that he set. Uh, there were some concer concerns in Washington that he would be more aggressive. But he really held the door open and said, look, China is here, we're willing. And I think it gives China kind of a first move advantage, given that the U.S. has not uh, put their ambassador in uh, Beijing. Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Xie Feng says uh, uh, Chinese-U.S. relations are in a standstill and face serious difficulties. Uh, he said uh, this after talking with U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman uh, in Tianjin just a few days ago. So in terms of uh, opening the door or, st or let the door stay opened, what do you think are the major challenges of that? The, the, the major challenge is uh, the belief in the United States that there's only one system and that all countries have to abide by this kind of democratic capitalism and it has to be on the terms that the U.S. wants. Uh, once uh, the U.S. realizes that countries are going their own way, that um, you know, there's not a hegemony of, of, of thought and there should not be a hegemony of power, then I think it would be um, easier for uh, these countries to kind of sort out uh, how their, their relationship with each other. But, uh, you know, in, in game theory, if I come to you and say I'm right and you're wrong, it's very, very difficult to have a constructive conversation. And uh, what the new ambassador has done is he said uh, very cordially is, that, look, we don't want to close the door. We want to figure out what the relationship is and we want to move forward, not only in the interests of uh, China and the U.S., but in the entire world. Right. And uh, is, this is, of course, not no easy job to be a Chinese ambassador to the U.S. What do you think for Qin Gang himself is the biggest challenge? Well, I mean, the, the overwhelming hostility that uh, you have, you know, you have over 66 percent of the American public believing that China is some sort of demon. Uh, and that is because of the, you know, these kind of constant daily attacks. But, I, you know, what is really appealing here is that China has kind of switched tactics. Uh, no, no longer waiting for the U.S. to set the agenda. Uh, you saw that in Anchorage when there was a very forcible reply to the usual litany of why China is, is, is a horrible country. And then uh, more recently, um, you know, with the, the Wendy Sherman visit, uh, it was re made very clear that uh, China, that Beijing put its uh, very positive agenda out front and said, look, this is who China is. Do not make us the bad guy. And, you know, let's get on with this. So following this, this, you know, putting the uh, uh, Beijing's agenda first and not letting it be dictated by the U.S., I think is a, a very good uh, for both sides. Because otherwise it was just a game of, you know, we push your buttons and uh, China responds. And that's not the way to run a relationship. Mm. We wish him uh a success as uh, the new Chinese ambassador to the U.S. Thank you very much, Ina Tangan, our current affairs commentator.